What's up? I'm Triple Shoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick one, I'll be showing you an optimization guide for Enshrouded. By the end of it, you should have a much better experience in game, more stable, more FPS, etc. So, without further ado, let's begin. This video is not going to jump into Windows optimization at all. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find detailed guides for optimizing Windows 10, 11, as well as anything else related. But this game will pretty much be hopping straight in. I'll start by disabling VSync and DLSS or upscaling to begin with, just so we can get a benchmark of the game's raw performance. I'll play, create myself a character, and there we go, we're in the game on a 3080 Ti at 2K with no DLSS, we're sitting at a solid 26 FPS, which is definitely not good to say the least, and of course we're inside, there's not a huge amount going on here, maybe a few particle effects and things like that. This game is definitely struggling to say the least, and if I enable an FPS overlay, you can see it's pretty stable, but it's a stable 26. That's not very good. Let's begin with the first optimization you'll probably want to make. Basically, no matter what options you choose under the display tab, when it comes to quality preset, you'll almost always have some sort of upscaling enabled. FXAA is just raw anti-aliasing, but FSR2 and DLSS both render the game at a lower resolution and use AI to upscale it. Obviously, DLSS is only available on NVIDIA RTX graphics cards, but FSR2 should be available for all graphics cards. If we have FSR2 enabled on the default settings, we jump to about 30 FPS, which is okay. As for DLSS, we're at around 23. The aliased edges around hair and other objects has disappeared. This definitely does objectively look better than raw ultra settings. However, our frames are still terrible. If we quickly jump through the presets, starting on max quality, we use DLAA, which is NVIDIA's RTX anti-aliasing, which doesn't actually upscale our image at all. So we're sitting at a solid 17 FPS, which is terrible. Jumping to quality, this is where most people will be playing, and we're sitting at a solid 31 FPS, once again at 2K on a 3080 Ti. Not good. Balanced, we jump to a playable 80 FPS, and this is probably where most people will play, but there's a good amount of pop in, especially with textures really close by, and of course the graphics have changed quite drastically. Down to performance, we're getting a solid 90, so not a huge gain, and fog definitely seems a lot more dramatic or visible. Finally, max performance, once again there's a huge drop in quality, and we're sitting at a solid 110 FPS which is really good, but there's some very odd things happening. Of course, tons of pop-in, etc. So where would I recommend you start before this optimization? Well, select a preset that works for you, most likely quality or balanced. Then we'll be working our way up and down. In order to test your FPS, much like I have, you'll need a third-party program like RiverTuner and MSI Afterburner, for example. There isn't an in-game FPS counter. Then you'll want to make sure that you have display mode set to full screen, resolution matching your monitor, resolution scale 100%, VSync off, field of view is your preference. Preference. Even though it does technically affect FPS, it's your preference and how you feel while you're playing the game should trump FPS numbers. Finally, limit frame rate in background shouldn't have much effect on your game, but at least when you tab out, you'll get much better performance in things like YouTube, which otherwise would be stuttering while you're playing the game should you have them on a different monitor. This game does eat all of your graphics card and CPU in order to push out these OK frame rates. Then we can start with the quality optimization. Once again, choose a preset that works for you, and for raw performance numbers, you'll probably want to turn off anti-aliasing completely. Then once you're done with the optimization, enable either FSR2 or DLSS, whichever one suits your graphics card and personal taste the best. At least we can see things change live in the background with no menu blur, so we can see the effect on different objects and things like that. Texture resolution shouldn't have much effect on frames, as you can see, if I push it up to max quality, after everything renders in that is, it stabilizes at around 50 to 55 FPS. But if we push it all the way down to performance and let it stabilize, we're at around 60, 55 ish FPS, only a marginal increase in performance. Essentially, texture resolution completely depends on the amount of VRAM in your graphics card. If you have around three gigs of VRAM in your graphics card, set it to performance, four gigs, balanced, six gigs, quality, and anything above that, set it to max quality. There's a very marginal performance impact, Shadow quality has a pretty big performance impact, pushing it up to max quality. We're setting it 47, quality 45, balanced 45, and performance 
50. If we pay attention to areas where there should be shadows and push it to anything above performance, you'll notice that suddenly shadows are a lot more visible, if not completely hidden on the performance settings. Depending on how you want your game to look, you'll either have it on balanced, performance, or quality. Personally, balanced seems like a pretty good place to leave this. Contact shadows should have a very minimal impact. We're setting at 25, turning it off, we're still at 25, but there's noticeably a few shadows missing. Having this on should greatly improve the feeling of depth in your image. Indirect lighting on max quality, we're at 19 FPS, quality 24, balance 24. Don't know why it's missing the last letter, but anyways, you'll probably want to have this on balanced or quality, but definitely not max quality, as that's just gonna wreck your FPS for almost no gain. Quality is where I'll be leaving this. Then, reflections, max quality, 25, 24 FPS, quality, the same, balance, 25, and that's it. There's obviously not much of an impact here, as there's not that many reflections around me, but balanced is probably gonna be the best place you can leave this for a more consistent experience. There you go, we're at around 35-ish. Quality, 32, max quality, 31, 30. Yeah, not sure what changed, but there was a sudden jump in FPS, maybe something moved around in the scene. Anyways, moving from 32 FPS, let's go to fog quality, of which there's a ton here, and for some reason it jumped to 48, okay. Performance, 46. Quality, 46, 48. Almost no difference here, even when there's tons of fog. For the most part, this shouldn't have too much effect on your system. Volumetric shadow quality. Quality, we get 49, 48. Balanced around the same, if not more stable at 49. And performance, once again, 49. Off completely, 53. So it seems like for the most part, you'll only gain performance when volumetric shadows are turned off completely. Performance gives you a small hit, balanced and quality almost no difference. So for the most part, have this off if you're clawing for extra performance, otherwise any of these options should suffice, such as maybe quality or balanced. Then SSAO. This has to do with ambient occlusion, which is essentially shadows from objects. Quality, we're getting 50-ish FPS, 52. Balanced, 53, 54. Performance, around the same. And off 55, 56. Once again, a very small performance impact, but it is noticeable when you turn this off. I'd recommend having this on performance. Distant objects, quality, we're setting at 53, 54, balanced 54, performance, and off all the same. Obviously, this will only really have a performance impact outside, so I'll make sure to double check this as soon as we get there. Voxel detail models, quality, 53, balanced, performance, and off pretty much the same for most of these. I'd recommend leaving this on, as you see it subtracts a huge amount from the scene, the trim on these different rock walls, etc. Having this on anything but off does give you more depth and information that you'd otherwise be missing. Quality is probably where I'd leave this. Small foliage, once again, this will only really affect us outside for the most part, other than making us reload the scene when we set it down to off or on. Tessellation, quality, we're setting at 50-ish FPS, balanced 50, performance, and off a jump to 56. So we only really get a performance increase when we have this disabled. But as you can see, when it comes to textures, mixing with other textures, there is a huge impact in how the game looks with this turned on versus off. Quality does look the best, balanced ever so slightly worse, performance there's a noticeable degradation, and finally off, the game's just not even trying. Performance is probably the lowest I would push this, balanced is probably where I'd leave it, and quality doesn't really add anything crazy. Point light shadows, quality we're sitting at 53, max quality 52, performance still around the same, and off around the same. There's not too much of an impact, but off versus on. There's a slight but noticeable change on how the scene looks. I'd recommend leaving this on performance or quality. That's pretty much it for the in-game settings optimization. Obviously, for the most part, the lower you'll be setting these settings, the better performance you can expect. However, we're setting at a solid playable 50-ish FPS, which is okay. For the most part, this is without DLSS or any kind of upscaling. At this point, you'll want to head back to display settings and enable anti-aliasing to either FXAA if you just want to get rid of jagged edges, otherwise preferably FSR2 or DLSS to get a huge increase in performance with actually a reasonable increase 
in quality for how the game looks. Things may be a little bit softer on the quality settings, but from 70 FPS, we can push it up to ultra quality, so the AI is doing slightly less work, and we only lose a handful of FPS, making this game playable and looks pretty good. Let's quickly find our way outside. Exiting here, we get our first glimpse, and of course, our first next drop of FPS and performance. For the most part, we have optimized our settings, so I'll just make sure to run through them once more and double check if we've missed anything or not. Once again, disabling upscaling we're setting at 28 which is terrible contact shadows on off takes us from 44 indirect lighting has a massive impact on performance maximum quality drops us to 19 fps quality to 44 balance to 45 between quality and ultra quality once again there's a huge drop in performance i think i've definitely confused something as if i enable reflections at all my screen went green let's turn it down and up again oh okay that's gone Anyways, between the options of reflections, there's still almost no impact. The effects of distant object are much more noticeable here, quite obviously, but as you can see, quantity looks like this. If we drop it down to balance, you'll notice that shadows in the distance, noticeably over here, seem to disappear. While this doesn't have an immediate impact on FPS, should hopefully be more stable as areas like this load in and out. When we push it down to performance, you'll notice a huge culling in nearby shadows, and pushing it down to off completely doesn't seem to have too much of an impact, but I'm pretty sure it's unloading distant objects that are just a bit too small to see here. This doesn't have a huge impact on performance, however, unfortunately. Voxel detail, no difference, but when it comes to destruction of objects and things like that, it should be a little bit more stable when we lower this down. Foliage quality from off at 30 FPS to performance, once again at 30, balanced 30, and quality 30 again. There's almost no impact with this option. Now that we've run through all of these settings once more, I'll re-enable a DLSS or FSR upscaling, set it to an option that we like, and exit out of our settings. Obviously, performance has changed a lot, and if you're actively messing with settings, your performance is probably going to be quite terrible. What you need to do if you've changed your settings and the game is performing at a very very substandard level, you'll need to save where you are and quit to desktop to restart the game entirely. Once again, loading back in and heading outside, you can see our performance has increased from a measly 10 to around 30-ish FPS, and of course, lighting and things like that that were previously unloaded have now loaded back in. Checking our settings, everything's still where we left it for the most part, but unfortunately, this game is still pretty difficult to run. While this may be a bit more stable on higher-end systems, let's see what we can do to our settings with the current optimized higher-end system settings to see what we can do on lower end systems. I'll move indirect lighting to balanced, voxel details to balanced, small foliage, performance, and point light shadows down to performance as well. We'll quickly close our game, restart, head back here, and see the performance impact. Inside, performance seems to be quite a bit better. We've gone from a solid 30 to around a solid 50. Heading outside and loading in the outside world, we've gone from a solid 30 to 35 slash 40. Definitely more playable, but of course still very low to say the least. Obviously, this game is still very close to release, early access, and there's much more work to be done. Performance should definitely be one of the things higher up on the developers list obviously as struggling this much on a 3080 ti at 2k is going to put a lot of older graphics cards completely off the table when it comes to playing this game which is still a huge point of market share the only thing you can do beyond here is lower your graphics settings further. So from 35, on our optimized FPS options rather than optimized quality, let's try drop pretty much everything down except for texture resolution just to see where we move. Turning absolutely everything off except for texture resolution and FSR slash DLSS, we're setting it as solid 36, so not much has changed. But if we restart, inside we're getting a solid 67 slash 70 and moving outside, a playable 52-ish FPS, but of course the game does look much more lower end MMOE with these tessellation textures and things like that disabled. So if there's one setting you'd raise, it'd probably be texture quality and display tessellation to performance or even balanced and things do look a little bit better. Oh, and voxel details to performance or anything above off adds way more to the scene. But that's pretty much all we can do on very low end systems. The performance is still not favorable to say the least, but you could expect a 1.3 to 1.5 times improvement playing this game at 1080p instead of 
2K like I am, but it's more suited for a 3080 Ti, an overkill graphics card, to be playing at at least 2K in modern titles, just to get a fair comparison with lower end graphics cards on 1080p. If we were to adjust our resolution or resolution scale at all, however, you'll see dropping it to as close to 1920 by 1080 as we can, the game gets noticeably blurrier and we move up to around 73ish FPS. This is why I wouldn't recommend changing your resolution or render scale at all, as it makes the game needlessly blurry compared to 100%. If you need more performance, leave these at 100 and push your FSR or DLSS quality from the quality side more to the performance side for better performance while still keeping the game looking as good as possible. You'll notice more weird artifacts, such as around the head here when I move it around, on more performance settings versus quality settings. Anyways, this game still leaves a lot on the table, it's still early access, but for the most part that's a quick optimization guide to hopefully get more performance out of your system, making this game more playable and look a bit better than just dropping everything down to off. Finally, one more thing before we go completely, let's try joining a server, that way we don't need to worry about hosting at the same time. Does this have a noticeable impact on performance? Well, we're sitting at 70ish inside and outside, even though it's nighttime 63. 3-ish FPS, so a very marginal increase in performance. Obviously, if you're CPU limited on your system, you'll see a much bigger impact when it comes to FPS when you're not hosting the server. So 54, 55-ish, not the most fair comparison, but on our own server, playing locally, 60-ish FPS, though it is daytime. Well, there we go, 54, 53. Yeah, it's actually surprisingly about the same, but that does make sense as hosting your server means you'll be using more CPU rather than raw GPU power alone. Anyways, hopefully you found this video useful. There's unfortunately not that much more we can do about the game at this current point. It all really comes down to the developer making changes as the game's development furthers. Anyways, hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.